our nephews are coming over. They are adorable and we love them and it is our duty to spoil them. But how are we going to do that, especially for the holidays, without giving them sugary treats? In today's Let's Talk About It, we're gonna give you five sugar-free tips for spoiling the kids in your life. Hey, what's up family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos, we do product reviews, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. That's where you're gonna find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Now, I should share this. Spoiling kids with sugary treats actually runs in my family. <laughs> <laughs> my mother often shared a memory that she had of her grandpa emptying out his candy filled pockets just out on the kitchen table in front of her to sort of lavish her with an abundance of what he would call fun. And my own grandfather always made sure that I had every single sweet treat on my wish list whenever I visited him, including Fruity Pebbles. Now, a little fun fact about Rachel. I was actually allergic to the red dye in that particular <laughs> version of the cereal back then. And my mom absolutely begged my grandfather to stop getting it for me because I couldn't settle down whenever I ate it. But for him, it fell into the jurisdiction of his grandfatherhood. And he bought it because he felt like it was his duty to spoil me. And that's how he thought you were supposed to do it. I had similar experiences when I was growing up too because we lived in New York and the, the little bit of family we actually had all lived in Florida. My aunt lived in Florida, my grandmother and grandfather lived in Florida, and my grandparents, my dad's parents, Oma and Opa, actually lived in Miami. And so whenever we would actually see them, we were always spoiled. Like when we would go visit my mom's parents who lived up in the Suwannee River area, like my biggest memory of them is getting candy yep. because we didn't get a lot of candy in our house growing up. But when we would go visit grandma and grandpa, they always had candy bars in a freezer out in their backyard. And if you talk about a fun fact, probably one of my last memories of getting one of those candy bars, it was a baby Ruth bar and it was covered in ants. And it kind of never wanted me to I never wanted to have a Baby Ruth bar ever again. I don't blame you, but I mean, we share that. Yeah. Grandparents gave you sugar. And um, so my mom and I have chatted a lot about this subject as she transitions into being a sugar-free grandma. And we thought now would be a great time to answer a question that came out of those chats, which was, how am I going to spoil these grandkids or kids now? And it's actually a really good question. And it's not just for grandparents either. As an aunt and an uncle, and somebody who works in children's ministry, there are a lot of awesome kids in our lives, and we don't want to spoil them with like sugar and things like that. But we do want to spoil them. We do want to spoil them. When we take a minute to think about how we don't want to consume sugar anymore because we believe it's poisonous to our body, we certainly don't want to be handing out that poison to kids in our lives. Exactly. So it's sort of wild how long we held on to the belief that we have to give the kids around us sugar because sugar equals childhood. Somehow we got it in our head that if we didn't keep spoiling the kids around us with sugar, they were going to have some sort of a lackluster childhood, right. but that's really not true. Yeah. And we needed to come to the realization that we have something even sweeter to offer kids in our family than sugar. And that is a healthy legacy. So let's get right into our list. We're going to talk about five things that you can spoil kids with that is absolutely sugar free. So number one, you can spoil them with a change of pace. The hectic, put your shoes on, put your shoes on, put your shoes on, scramble out of the house every morning from parents in a hurry to get from an appointment to another appointment to like a soccer game. That's not a thing at the grandparent land. No, I mean, when they're with you, they have time to daydream, to lose track of time, to fish and not catch anything, <laughs> to build something, to take something apart and to, you know, play fun, low tech activities. You have the 
the opportunity to show them that relaxation doesn't require a bag of chips. And really, you're teaching them much healthier forms of relaxation that they can retreat to when they're older. I mean, over the years, when I was really stressed out, I always reached for a coping me mechanism from my childhood. And often, I'd grab like a chocolate chip cookie because that's something that grandma would make. My oma and opa would make cookies and airmail them down to us in New up, up to us in New York. And I always thought that was a great way to unwind. But I'd eat the cookie and then still be stressed out. It wasn't actually the cookie that was relaxing me. It was the slower pace of just enjoying something that they made for me. Exactly. We aren't hurrying our nephews to a dentist appointment or rushing them out the door to school like their parents have to do. When they're with us, they can linger at the beach. We can play a longer game of Pokemon Go at the park. <laughs> We're not in a hurry. And that's not something that a kid gets to enjoy every day. Yeah. So number two. You can spoil them with your superhuman hearing. Because of the more sustainable pace at my mom's house these days, she has time to listen, and my kids love that. Parents don't have devoted time to listen to their children distraction free. At their grandparents' house or their aunts and uncles' house, children have the opportunity to share their thoughts, develop beliefs, expound on story ideas, think outside the box, and right. use their imagination without fear of being judged. And because aunts and uncles and grandparents have developed a relationship of listening, the kids in your life are more likely to share important matters of their life with you while they're still processing options not just after they've come to a decision. And that's a huge win for the relationship. I would much rather lavish listening and gain a position of prominence in the future than lavish them with sugar and possibly only feed into a future sugar addiction. And that takes us to number three. You can spoil them by just letting them be little. So parents are in charge of the what's next, but you can language in the what's now or even what used to be. Yeah, it's okay if you ride the smaller bike that you feel safer on over a grandma house. You know, you can use the preschool fishing pole that you are the master of casting or play with the Lego blocks in your recommended age group and not have to go above it. You don't have to focus on growing up at your relative's house. You can make a living room for it and camp in childhood as long as you want. Yeah. Huh. So number four is you can spoil them with teachable moments. Absolutely. Now a vacation at your house doesn't mean a vacation from emotions. There are still going to be meltdowns at your house and even on Christmas morning. <laughs> Children are still going to experience sadness, frustration, and even anger in your presence. But the difference is you have the time and patience their parents right. don't to help them channel their feelings in a more healthy way. Yeah, I mean, you can even help them develop healthy self-care behaviors. Your grandparents may have taught you to reach for sweet or savory dishes when you needed comforting, but you can change the direction of your grandchild's relationship with food by showing them other ways, like taking a walk or going fishing, maybe swinging on a swing or even going on a bike ride. All of that will help to react to negative emotions. All right, last but certainly not least is number five. You can spoil children simply by being a healthy relative. Yeah, the steps that you've taken to be alive and well for the kids in your life is a gift to them. The fact that they have a healthy relative to enjoy is a miracle into itself. And because you are healthy, you're going to be able to provide insight on their heritage, pass on knowledge from the generations before, and encourage them to take your family to the next level. Now, when I think about the time that I spent with my grandfather, I don't wish that I had one more bowl of Fruity Pebbles. I wish I had just one more afternoon of rocking in the porch swing beside him. Right. And the kids in your life feel the same way that I did whenever I was around somebody I knew loved me. They feel spoiled. Yeah. Now, I know that you said that was the last one, but I actually have one more. It's okay. a bonus one. All right. And this is something that actually meant a lot to our kids, and that is have an experience with them. I know as our kids were growing up, John Paul and Anthony used to fly up to New York every single summer to spend two weeks to a month with grandma. And she would take them white water rafting, hiking, 
camping, take them down to Pennsylvania, but they had all these experiences and they can look back now and think about like, all these awesome times they had with her and not be thinking about the candy and stuff. And Caleb had the same thing. Same exact thing with my mom. They went whitewater rafting. She will still go kayaking even today. And as, you know, almost 20 years old, having a grandmother that is healthy enough to be active and to still enjoy, that really is a spoiling thing, right? I mean, yeah. to have to be an adult and have a grandparent that can do active, fun things with you, that is awesome and also rare. Yeah. Well, that's going to be our video for today. And let us know down in the comment section some other things that you think that you could possibly do to spoil kids in your lives other than giving them sugary candy and treats. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, we have an entire playlist, which I'm going to link right down there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which you can find right over here. Whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel, hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. bye.